Hello everyone, Patrice Luis Chiwanara again here. Uh, today's topic is about discourse analysis and today our topic is genre and organization of text. Let's dive into my PowerPoint slides. So this is the topic for today, uh, genre and the organization of text. This uh, material is taken from uh, a textbook, Critical Reading and Writing in the Digital Age, an introductory course book and second edition by Godley and Hiragjar. And uh, this refers specifically to chapter one, pages 13 up to 22. Now let's discuss the genre first. Let's define what genre is. Simply defined, genre is a text that has some specific features and specific communicative purpose to attain. So it's very simple definition. I make it simple so that it's easier for you to remember it. Yeah. So for example, a uh, genre of recipe, this is, it has of course some specific features and the purpose that it wants, it wants to attain is to instruct a cook to make food. Yeah. Novel is also another genre. Uh, the purpose is to entertain the readers. And news, yet another genre, is to inform the readers or listeners of the current development or current affairs. Yeah. Okay, so that's genre. Yeah. Now let's start with the clause and sentence level. Uh, information in the clause and sentence level can be organized uh, as simple as this. The theme and theme. Yeah, the theme and theme somehow corresponds to given information and new information. Yeah, so this is equal to theme and theme. Given is the theme and new information is the theme. For example, Universitas Machung opened a new branch. Now Universitas Machung here is the theme. It is something that has been given, something that has been known by the listeners or the readers if they happen to read uh, the sentence. Yeah. It's given, it means that it has been given as a known fact. And then the next clause, uh, the next phrase is open a new branch. Now this is something new, something new that the listeners or the readers have not known about. And that's why it is called new information. And this corresponds with RIM. And so theme and RIM corresponds to given and new. This is how information is structured at the, on the level of clause and sentence. Yeah. Okay, now example from the textbook. You have uh, this text. Uh, notice that the underlying phrase is actually the theme. It is something that has been given, has been given as something that is already known something that the readers or listeners have, uh, have been familiar with. Yeah. So an uh, anti-apartheid apartheid activist Nelson Mandela, that's the theme. And then the rim or the new information is died on December 5th, uh, December 5th, 2013. That's something new. And again, the word Mandela is repeated. It refers to the uh, to the phrase uh, before that, yeah. Again, this is something that has been given. It's the theme, yeah. and then the theme is uh, the new information. is spent twenty-seven years in prison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of the underlying phrase, phrases here are the theme, the given information, the known information, and. Those that are not underlined are the new information or the REAM. Yeah. Okay, now let's move on to the paragraph structure. Um, there are four structures in which or by which the information is organized in a paragraph. The first one is the steps. Yeah, the steps, um, it refers or it tells a procedure, it tells the procedures uh, or a process that occurs in the order of time or chronologically. Yeah, so it has something to do with a series of steps, a series of procedures that must be done or must be conducted 
um, in the order of time. Yeah. So for example, a recipe will go something like this. Heat, fat, in frying pan. That's the first step. Second step is when hot, when it is hot, add peas. And then turn and stir fry slowly over a medium, uh, medium heat. Add chicken broth and continue to stir fry for one more minute. And then the next step, sprinkle with salt, sugar, and sherry, and stir fry gently for one further minute, and then serve. Now, this is the steps. Yeah, it tells information in the order of time, uh, in the chronological order, from one step to the next one. You may also notice that this applies to uh, historical um, historical essay. Yeah. So, for example, Hitler was born in such and such year, and then he went on to uh, World War One, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So that also applies to some historical essay. Um, essay about a history of something. Yeah. Okay, that's the steps. Now the next one is the stack. Stack is um, this structure piles up a series of arguments to support a position. Yeah, a series of arguments to support a position. It starts with a topic sentence. Topic sentence is actually the core of the argument, the essence of the argument. And then the rest of the sentences support the topic sentence by giving examples, by giving illustrations, by giving statistical evidence, yeah, those kinds of things that will support the argument stated in the topic sentence. And if you visualize it, 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 uh, it looks like a stack. The top one being the topic sentence, and then the, uh, the item below that supports the topic sentence. Yeah. So, for example, uh, playing online games offers several advantages. Now, this is a topic sentence. This is the, uh, the core of the argument. Yeah, that's the core of the argument. And then uh, the next sentence will support this. First, it relieves stress or boredom. And then the next sentence gives even further support. It creates fun atmosphere that releases endorphin. And second, now this comes the second second pile in the in the stack. Yeah, the second argument. In some ways, it sharpens the cognitive skills, and so on and so on. And so, uh, it really resembles a stack, which starts with a topic sentence on on the top of the stack, and then continues. It continues with the support, the sentences that support the topic sentence. That's the stack. Yeah. Um, the next one is the chain. The chain is, it features a feeling of quick connection from one sentence to another. So if you read this um, essay with the chain structure, you will sense the feeling of connection, quick connection from one sentence to another sentence. Yeah. Usually the last point mentioned in one sentence becomes the first point that starts the next sentence. And so uh, it's, it looks like a chain. Yeah, the, uh, the last point mentioned in one sentence becomes the first point that starts the next sentence. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, mosquitoes are small vampires. Notice that here the word vampires ends this sentence. And then the word vampires start the next sentence. These vampires fly around you almost invisibly and suck your blood. Blood is the last point mentioned here, and then it starts the next sentence. Blood is vital for these creatures, and creatures being the last, the last point mentioned here, uh, it starts the next sentence. Creatures like this must be terminated. This is chain. Okay. The balance. Now, the balance gives equal consideration to two different arguments, or two different objects, or two different choices. It offers advantages and disadvantages of concept A, yeah, and then also advantages and disadvantages of concept B. So it really gives equal consideration to the two concepts A and B. The A, uh, in, in discussing A, the advantages and disadvantages are offered. In discussing B, likewise, the 
uh, advantages and disadvantages are also discussed. Okay. So let's go to the example. Traveling alone and traveling with friends offer their own advantages and disadvantages. Now you have two concepts being uh, compared here. Traveling alone and traveling with friends. Yeah. When traveling alone, the traveler enjoys more freedom. This is the advantages. But when problems arise, he or she has to tackle it alone. Certainly, this is a dis disadvantage of traveling alone. When traveling in groups, there may be less freedom. This is the disadvantage of traveling in groups. But there are always friends to help whenever problems arise. Now, this is the uh, dis this is the advantage of traveling with friends. Yeah. So you see that uh, because equal amount of consideration or discussion is given to each concept, then we have balance. We have a balanced structure. Yeah. It may end with something that uh, simply summarizes the considerations, or if the writer wants, if you want as a writer, you can opt for you can opt one for offer the other. You can choose one over the other. Of course, it's up to you because you are the writer. Yeah, you can um, end the the paragraph with uh, one definite choice of yours that you make after considering the advantages and disadvantages of uh, the two options. Okay. Now for the assignment, uh, find a text that features either one of those four paragraph structures. You can find a text printed or online. Present the text and explain its parts. So for example, you, uh, you present a text with um, stack organization or stack structure. You point out, okay, this one is a topic sentence. Uh, the next one supports the topic sentence, things like that. And number two, assignment, the second assignment is write a simple paragraph that is organized in one of those four structures. Now, this comes uh, time to practice or to apply the principles that we have just attended to from my lecture. You write, try to write a paragraph with one of those structures. If you like chain, go ahead, writing an essay or a paragraph with chain organization. If you like uh, balance, you can go ahead writing an essay with that kind of structure and so on and so on. Good luck, stay healthy, stay safe. See you again in my next episode. Bye.